Hey everyone, here's a part 2 of the Protein Skimmer uh, do-it-yourself project. Um, pretty much I'm almost done. Uh, almost there. I uh, hope you guys like it. Uh, it's been a lot of work, sorry for the long delay. Just been really busy lately. Um, so here we go, this is a full-on protein skimmer. It's about 6 inch diameter. Uh, the height on this is just about starting from the floor up it's about uh, 30 inches 29 inches high alright so here you go it's rated for about anywhere from uh, 250 to uh, 400 gallon tank hopefully it's gonna do a good job the output diameter on the PVC piping here it is a one inch diameter with a ball valve the inlet is um, I think uh, what is it a half inch pipe and uh, on the inlet at the bottom, I actually found this piece where the pump is going to lock into place and then the pump's going to sit right around there and that's the other side is the outlet now everything on the outside once again it is adjustable, removable so you can drop it down take it out and leave it in the sump or leave it as a hang on filter as you can see the little clamp there I glued it on right to the bottom made a T bracket so holding it from the base of the bottom, weld on, and then uh, I have a, I think that's a 3 8 inch thick with a U bracket on the top so it hangs on to the back of the tank or the side of the tank, your choice. So the inner pipe, the 1 inch diameter, drops all the way down to roughly about half inch from the bottom. The reason why I drop it all the way down is because I don't want the output of the water to take out most of the bubbles which I had the, well, on the test run I did that's what, that's what the problem I had so on the test run I cut the pipe just around there and I left the water uh, turned on the pump and what happened is that the water tend to uh, come out but it was taking out a lot of bubbles so I wanted to optimize the best use of all the bubbles possible so that's why I left it at the bottom the inlet I left it out because the force of the bubbles usually takes the, uh, the bubbles all the way down to roughly about only 10% to the bottom and I have a PVC uh, flange where uh, it is removable so you can unscrew it take it out for maintenance there you go top does come off just like that uh, and I had this ABS plastic lying around so I put it to use uh, what the inner diameter the ring is uh, the bubbles gonna get trapped there and then it's gonna drop to the bottom so there's no leakage on from the outer ring and so here you go that inner tube there is about two inch diameter goes out to about four inches and then back to the flange if you look at the part one video I show you exactly how to cut that uh, once again here everything's accessible with the whole hand inside of it um, here even if, even if you want to remove the pipe for maintenance again everything is removable it comes off no problems with that putting it back in and just lock it into place and uh, here we go again this is again once the screw on now you do need two hands to lock this in so it's uh, water tight but uh, yeah, there you go, right to the top, and uh, lock it in. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so you guys have a better idea of it, a better view. That's it. Now there is a video online, um, I forget what's it called again, but if you go to um, Overflow Theory, or reef tank overflow uh, there, there's a guy online and what he does is he explains to you what the differences are when you have an inlet coming in at a certain diameter and an outlet and what type of flow and uh, how well, what type of flow remains in the canister or in the tank so, so you can pretty much choose um, uh, anywho so what he's trying to say is whatever diameter inlet you have you should go one inch bigger or two inch bigger 
Now, two inches is just way too big. I mean, that two inch theory, it is for uh, an overflow for your tank if you want to get it drilled. But in this method, I always say if you're doing a one inch, have a two inch out. If you're doing a half an inch, you may want to go one and a half inch or one inch uh, outlet. Uh, in this case, it is a half inch in and one inch out. It gives me uh, just enough adjustable flow. Uh, in the next video, I will show you exactly how this is run. Um, but on the test run, uh, when I have the valve fully opened, the water tended to stay right at that level right there. So, and that's what you want. You want to be able to adjust this right from the outlet all the way up to the inlet. So the water will go right to the top if I shut the valve completely. Now the valve I got from uh, Lowe's, pretty pretty cheap. It wasn't too much money. Uh, again, I need two hands. Um, <clears throat> I have a uni seal. Now with a uni seal, I always like to just... Um, some people just drill a hole and just stick it in. And it does create a complete seal, but uh, you know what? Better safe than sorry, I use aquarium silicone and silicone everything into place just to be safe. And that piece right there, how it uh, narrows in, that's actually off my old protein skimmer that I had lying around. So I just cut the top off where it narrows down and added that 2 inch pipe to it. And that gave me a perfect dimension. I was actually going to take a tube. I heated it up in the oven, tried to uh, create an open flange, a reverse open flange, so I can, I can uh, glue it over there. But uh, what happened is uh, this pipe here, on the test run, uh, when I put it in the oven, it just uh, it lost its formation, lost the oval shape to it, the circle shape, and it just deformed. So I threw them in the garbage. But I uh, hope you guys like it. All right. Now on the on the output here, I do have a little sponge for now. But you can actually go ahead and uh, get a micro microfiber cloth and just uh, put it around here so that you get no bubbles in the tank if you want to have an on uh, hang on the back protein skimmer. But uh, in this case right now, this is just temporary until my friend gets a sump for the bottom and then you're going to be able to put it at the bottom. And, uh, for the, and I know you see a big difference in gap here, but in all sense, you can always take this out, right, make a bigger bigger pipe and just so it drops to the bottom so you don't have water splashing in your sump. So here you go, this pump that I have here, it is a cheap Chinese pump for now. I know you guys know some of that company, Boyu or whatever the hell you call it. But it is a submersible pump, uh, the model number is SP102-1600. Uh, power consum consumption is uh, 20 watts. And uh, yeah, there you go. You have the Venturi effect that's gonna draw the water, uh, the bubbles from the the tube here and from the tube you can actually adjust how much air you want in and out so hope you guys like it please rate, comment, subscribe and uh, the next video you guys will see exactly how it's gonna run and hopefully this project uh, works out for me if it does I'll be saving a lot more money alright guys thank you have a good day